Women's Running. running, running. Running, running stories. stories. It's so easy to look back and to feel like a lot of feelings about the past and to look forward and to like think that, you know, it's it's all about these big goals that are down the road. But my biggest thing right now is to just try to really enjoy the present moment. And uh, and that's to even embrace like the parts of the present moment that are hard, like lack of sleep. Oh my goodness. So much. (laughs) So I feel like I haven't gotten a good night of sleep in over six months, but there's so much beauty happening like right now in this exact day of my journey. And like that 5k, I felt like was such a celebration of the present moment, like not, not where I wanted to be down the road and not super focused on the two years that had got me to that point, but just just celebrating like I I got to be back on a start line and got to do what I love surrounded by people that I love and and uh, especially to have yeah my daughter by my side and my dad by my side and um and my mom too but there's just there's so much that felt really really special and that does feel really really special about what's going on right now Hi, my name is Rachel Smith. I'm a professional runner for Hoka, who lives in Flagstaff, Arizona. Yes, this race report episode features professional runner and Olympian Rachel Smith, who has a lot to enjoy in the moment, not the least of which is how it all went down at the 2023 U.S. ATF 5K National Road Championships, and she is here to tell us all about it. But before we hear more from Rachel, I want to welcome you to Women's Running Stories, the podcast where women share stories about their running experiences. I am Cherie Louise Turner. I am your host and producer, and this podcast is a proud member of the Evergreen Network of Podcasts. Now let's get on to this episode. Like I mentioned, this is one of our race reports where I get the story from one of the top 10 finishers at a major running race. And in particular, this year, I have been following the US ATF running circuit races. And these are races that happen all throughout the year in various locations throughout the United States. And each race is a different distance and serves as the national championship event for that distance. In addition, racers earn points at each event based on how they placed, and those points go toward the overall circuit championship. And this 5K event, which just took place on Saturday, November 4th in New York City, is the final event of this year. And this 5K event is a big one. You're going to hear all about that. So let's get to it. Rachel Smith is one of the top U.S. distance runners. Among many accolades, Rachel was a member of Team USA in the 5,000 meter at the Tokyo Olympics, and she is the 2021 U.S. ATF One Mile Road Race National Champion. But she has been on a bit of a break from racing to have her first child. And this race is the first big race that she has run since having her daughter Nova six months ago. Our story begins with Rachel's pregnancy and how she navigated that time period and her postpartum return to running. Here to tell the story is Rachel Smith. I felt really lucky. I was able to train throughout almost my entire pregnancy and and felt good physically through almost every stage of it. I say that relatively, you know, you always get like, as your body changes, there's a lot of like discomforts, but overall I felt very comfortable and um, happy to be able to run and to continue training. At 37 weeks pregnant, I actually found out my baby was breech. So that threw us for a little bit of a surprise. And um, I stopped, stopped running at 37 weeks and luckily was able to get an ECV procedure done where they were able to flip her. So I had 
so, like had the scheduled C-section all all on the books because, you know, if, if your baby's breached, that's that's what they recommend doing for a safe delivery. So for like a week there, I thought we were going to have to do a C-section and um, felt very lucky that she was able to flip. And at 39 weeks, she uh, she decided that was her time to <laughs> to enter the world. And the labor and delivery was was wild and I, I describe it as it was wild and wonderful, exhausting and excruciating. But overall, it was the best best experience of my life with my husband and getting to meet our daughter and how it all went. It, it allowed for a really quite smooth recovery, which that part actually I think surprised me a little bit because you know I the biggest thing with how I took training during pregnancy and the recovery and return to running post pregnancy was was not to not to compare to anyone else's journey but to really be good about listening to my own body and doing with what what felt right for me and obviously taking in the advice of doctors and um healthcare professionals but but really just paying attention to what my body felt was it was able to handle and i uh yeah it felt really quite good pretty quickly after birth and was able to start walking pretty much right away. And then uh, I was able to use um, anti-gravity treadmill and Alter-G to do some of my first runs um, and really like help that transition back to impact training. And, and I think that was just so huge for me. Like right at, right at four weeks, I was on the Alter, Alter-G treadmill and able to get some good low impact running in. And then I started ground running right around six weeks. And, and that felt really awkward at first. There was definitely some like discomfort or like just my body didn't quite, you know, my body was still very much in the recovery phase from birth. So there is like first couple of weeks where I'm like, oh my gosh, if I ever going to like feel like myself running again, this is uh this is <laughs> definitely a different, different sensation. But then gradually my body started to feel more and more like itself. And I remember right around like 10 weeks starting to feel like I was putting together some pretty, pretty good runs and getting to like work out again. And yeah. And then just kind of from there, slowly incrementally built and there, you know, I I say there really hasn't been any hiccups, but part of that is like, if anything has felt off, we just take a step back and I would take like a day to two days off and, um, then reevaluate. And if I took a day or two off, then it seemed like whatever it was would go away. So, so you yeah, have just really, really taken the approach of being really dialed in on what my body is saying and listening to that and not, not trying to force things and not trying to follow anyone else's timelines or guidelines. And, and that's worked really, really well for me. Rachel also credits that little extra something that materializes when you become a mom. I really do believe in mom strength. Like it's something I, I thought was maybe a cliche phrase or not totally a cliche phrase, but it's a phrase I, I didn't fully understand until being on this side because gosh, I love my sleep. <laughs> I love, I love, I love sleep and I've gotten very, yeah, very, my, my sleep has really taken a hit since becoming a mom. And, uh, but for some reason, I'm like, okay, I don't know if it's like a hormonal thing or just like a like totally running off of so much extra love and happiness because I get to be a mom that the lack of sleep doesn't seem as debilitating. <laughs> it's uh, it mom, mom strength and uh, yeah, just being, I think, being fueled by so much, so much love and so much support that's being poured into me from other people has... Uh, has made up made made this very possible. Another part of the postpartum journey that Rachel is learning how to navigate is breastfeeding. I didn't know much about breastfeeding and training at an elite level and, you know, the tax that it takes on your body and what it means for recovery. So I I feel like I'm still in some ways figuring this out and navigating it in a way that feels like I'm still very curious cuz I can't say I feel like even even though you know, I'm six months in and still breastfeeding. I, I don't know like exactly how it's affecting my body, except that it definitely is a high energy demand. And I try to be super like extra intentional about like how much I'm hydrating and how much I'm fueling my body and trying to 
make sure I'm doing that in a way that can support both my daughter and then um, and support my own body and my training and recovery goals. So it's definitely so it's it's so beautiful. Like there's this there's this part of me that's like I know whenever I do stop breastfeeding, I'm gonna feel pretty sad because it's the most incredible bond. Um, getting to nurse my daughter and and uh, I, I don't have any plan right now on exactly when I'll stop, but I do know that you know the science shows it's pretty yeah it can be a big drain on your body and, and can zap you of calcium and zap you of other like important um, nutrients that really support training and recovery. So, so far, knock on wood, I've been able to do it, what I would say very successfully, like haven't, haven't had any setbacks, um, in training and, and have been able to, yeah, really nurture my daughter with what seems to be, she's, she's, (laughs) she's growing and thriving. Being a new mom who was breastfeeding also meant that race day mornings now look a little bit different. So the race started at 8.30, and I decided to get up right around 4.30, um, walk down to the lobby, wake myself up, get some coffee, and then go back to the hotel room and take care of my daughter, Nova. Um, I nursed her right around 5.30 and then got dressed for the race and left the hotel, which it was still dark when we left. The sun hadn't come up. And um, yeah, it was a bit chilly, but you could tell it was going to be a nice crisp fall morning for the race. So once we loaded on the bus, I uh, I got to sit next to my friend, Abby D'Agostino Cooper, who is also a new mom. And um, we, <laughs> again, a little, a little abnormal from years past. Um, instead of geeking out about like running and training, we were geeking out about all things mom and just talking about our daughters and just, yeah, it was, it was a great way to start the race morning. Though a lot had changed since Rachel had last lined up for a championship race, One thing remained the same, and that was her excitement about racing. I could tell as uh, as getting closer to this race, I I was getting more and more excited and a little bit more nervous because because training had been going so well. I was like, oh wow, I I actually think you know based off how some of these workouts have been and and um, I've been running some decent decent mileage. I think I put together probably two weeks of 80 plus mile weeks and, um, some really good workouts in there. And and I was like, I, I can be competitive. Like I can really probably put together a pretty good, pretty good 5k right now, which I hadn't felt that way. Um, it's been almost two years since the last time I've really felt competitive just with how, um, my pregnancy journey went, It, it had been a little while since I had that feeling. So I I was very excited. I was also a little nervous. I didn't want to put any like real expectations on this race. It's my first real one back. I also just wanted to make sure that the ways I would define success in this race were to really just yeah, learn learn what it's like to be back out there having this new chapter start. So I remember actually, yeah, a big part of it was just getting to like feel the excitement and the adrenaline of the crowd and really focused on gratitude for being out there. That was one of the biggest things for me was just really soaking in the whole race environment, soaking in how awesome it is to be back. Obviously, New York City is just its own crazy, chaotic, high energy place. But then you have this 5K that's taking place the day before the New York City Marathon, and there's 14,000 athletes running the 5k. And then on top of that, it serves as the youth 5k national championship road race and the professional USATF 5k national championships, which is the one I was competing in. And yeah, that that just having 14,000 people paired with these two national championship races made for just such an amazing atmosphere. I just remember being like, oh my gosh, I love this. And um, when the gun went off, I I knew I wanted to be a little bit more conservative than uh, I might typically be just because uh, the last mile of this race takes part in Central Park where there's some big hills and I wanted to be coming on strong that last mile. So I I stuck with the pack for the first first mile of the race and then Kira D'Amato kind of put a move in and, and spread out the field a bit. And I hung back a little. I think I was running 
uh, I was leading the second pack. So I think Kira D'Amato, Wayne Kalati, and Annie Rodenfelds had taken off and I was running in fourth or fifth. And uh, I thought that was a good spot to be and was hoping I'd be able to close on close on them a little bit in that last mile. Um, I remember, I remember as I was coming into Central Park, which is right around a mile to go, I saw my dad and uh, he was cheering for me. And and that was just so special for its own reasons. And just, I just, the whole race was just so happy. Like I just felt like I was running on this joy and this gratitude for for being back out there. And um, I really think that in itself gave me a lot of extra strength that last mile. Um, my dad, when he saw me a, with a little bit more than a mile to go, he like said that there was this really big gap between me and uh, the top three. And and there really was like I, I kind of let them go more than in hindsight, more than I probably would have or should have. But um, there's these hills in Central Park where uh, I kind of knew in my mind, I was like, you know, if, if I'm feeling good going into Central Park, I can really use those hills to like real people back in and um, to just keep like really grinding it out, um, going on those uphills and then really use the down. So I I noticed with about a mile to go, there's this big hill that um, Kiera and Wayne kind of seemed to be slowing down a bit and I was closing the gap. So I used that to just keep like chipping away, chipping away. And um, I didn't know again if I had like left a little bit too much of a gap to close down, but I think I passed... I think I passed them right around with like 300 meters to go and um, felt really good closing in. I actually wish I had maybe started um, pushing a little bit earlier because um, I'm not sure if I was closing in on Annie or not, but um, but it was just really exciting to be finishing finishing the race feeling so strong and feeling like I had some good forward momentum. So I uh, think... I believed I could do that and I was ready for that, but it just felt so good to be back at a competitive level and to finish second in a championship race and and to run a pretty respectable time on, on a tough course too. So it was just, yeah, it was a very, very happy, happy day for me. <laughs> yes, Rachel had a phenomenal finish, closing a sizable gap to run her way into second place behind winner Annie Rodenfels. But before she could go off and celebrate her great podium finish and return to elite-level racing, there was some other business that she was called to attend to. So after the race, um, I was chosen for drug testing, and uh, it probably had been a couple hours since I had uh, last Nurse Nova. So I was like, all right, she she both needs me and I need her. So, um, and I don't know how long drug testing will take because sometimes, you know, it takes me like an hour or two to pee after a race. So um, they were so great. They were like, yeah, no, just bring her with you. And um, Nova hung out with us in the drug testing tent and I was able, able to nurse her right there. And then she was just happy to hang out with me and my agent and friends in the, <laughs> in the drug testing tent. And uh, yeah, it just felt like very, very supportive. Like nobody made it feel like that baby shouldn't be here or anything like that. It was, it was just very, um, yeah, very welcoming. Oh my gosh. This is something that I feel like has really come a long way in the last couple of years. And there's these beautiful movements and much more attention on it in terms of providing nursing women with like private spaces to either nurse or to pump. And uh, it's, it's, I really feel like, um, you know, there's uh, Alicia Montano found this organization called Ann Mother, and they are such advocates for providing support for moms and especially for breastfeeding moms at races. That organization just makes me like feel so seen and makes, I know so many, so many countless women from amateur level to professional level levels just feel, yeah, so supported and yeah. And just seen like to feel seen in every step of your running journey. And, and gosh, like what, like we should, I feel like, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but like, I feel like we should be so excited for female athletes who want to start families and that's like, and to not stop running. Like it's, it's such a amazing thing that our bodies are able to do both and to able like to successfully do both, but 
to do it more successfully if we're supported and if we're seen. And Anne Mother is just really, um, yeah, they're they're pioneering the the level of support that I think is uh, really beautiful at these events. And that to me is just such an incredible movement because we do need that type of support. You know, like you can't you can't comfortably run a race without having some plan for either nursing your baby right beforehand or having a space and a time to pump um, before before you get on the start line. So I am excited to see that there's a lot more conversations and attention and an actual like support happening at these events. While Rachel is no doubt enjoying this moment of returning to professional racing while now being a mom, she also has plans for what comes next in her racing career. The biggest thing coming up, or the biggest thing I'm focused on coming up is definitely the outdoor track season of 2024. So that's, um, you know, really looking to qualify for the Olympic Olympic trials again and give myself the best shot at making that Olympic team. But more than that, I, I'm just so excited to get to race at a competitive level again. It, it has, again, it's been about two years since I've really been able to do this. And I love, I love competing and I love like racing is the best part. It's the most fun part for me. So I just really look forward to getting back out there. I think I'll be on lots of start lines if all goes well, because I've missed it a lot. And I also just think building into the outdoor track season, it's it's um it's good for me to get these experiences again and to like this 5K was not something I mean, we we actually didn't even have this really on the plan for a little while because you know, so much of coming back from birth, you just have to stay really open and and I didn't know if if uh, I'd be able to be fit six months postpartum or, um, yeah, where, where racing would really start again. So when things started going well, I was like, all right, let's, yeah, that 5k sounds really fun and, uh, feel like I'm in a good place for it. But right now I I do feel like just excited and hungry to race. And I also think it's really valuable experience, especially as I'm trying to figure out, you know, like how to navigate a race morning while also navigate taking care of Nova and, um, yeah, just kind of figure out what this new chapter of motherhood and elite running, yeah, looks like. And that brings us to the end of Rachel's story about how it all went down at the 2023 USATF 5K National Road Championships. Thank you so much, Rachel, for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. And congratulations on an exceptional race, a return to elite level racing, and on becoming a mom. I, for one, am super excited to continue to follow Rachel's running career, and you can follow along too. I will provide links of how you can keep up with Rachel Smith in the show notes. I will also provide links to our other race reports so you can hear how the whole season has unfolded in the 2023 USATF running circuit races. And being that this was the last race of the circuit, the champion of the circuit has been decided. Edna Kurgat is this year's winner, followed by Emma Grace Hurley, and in third is Nell Rojas. I will be following the entire circuit again next year, so be sure to subscribe so you do not miss any of the action. Thank you so much for listening. I always appreciate you being here, and I do not make these episodes by myself. Cormac O'Regan makes all of the original music for women's running stories, and he does that from his studio here in Cork, Ireland. I am Cherie Louise Turner. I am your host and producer, and I am coming to you from my home closet studio, also in Cork, Ireland. And until next week, I do wish you healthy, joyful strides forward. Women's running, running, running. Women's running stories.
Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman.